focus on Islam. Focus on Islam. Focus on Islam. It's Focus on Islam, an hour program that brings you face to face with Musa Kenan and his studio guests. Focus on Islam is a program designed to discuss the Islamic faith in totality, from prayers, way of life, Hajj, Ramadan, and many more. Focus on Islam comes this and every Friday only on Real TV. Focus on Islam. Focus on Islam. Focus on Islam. It's Focus on Islam, an hour program that brings you face to face with Musa Kenan and his studio guests. Focus on Islam is a program designed to discuss the Islamic faith in totality, from prayers, way of life, Hajj, Ramadan, and many more. Focus on Islam comes this and every Friday only on Real TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. We say you are all welcome to this Friday, February 26th edition of the program Focus on Islam. A full hour program that gives you the opportunity to understand Islam, the way of life, Ramadan, and everything about Islam. Today we are so excited to be discussing a very important topic today. That is how to live in a neighborhood. You know, most, most Muslims around the world in Liberia live in what many people believe in a community like sequence live with your calling your friend muslims and sometimes live with non-muslim so we're going to be telling you how it is it how is it like a muslim should be living in their neighborhood and to the discuss this again this second time we we'll have with all the grand mufti of the republic of liberia sheikh abu bakar Smaru. he's going to be telling us how important it is to live in your neighbor as a muslim as a muslim man or woman as a family how to take care of your neighborhood how to be that cohesive in your neighbor so i want to go strictly to sheikh abaka smaru sheikh salam alaikum and welcome to focus on islam wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh okay you live in a neighbor like anybody so we're going to talk about how important it is to live in our obligation as muslim to live in the neighborhood so this is like that's what we talk about where it is and how it is to live in the neighborhood bismillahir rahmanir rahim assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'adihi wa nasta'afiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min siyyati amalina من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة والنصح الأمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد مدية لسنس مدية برودرس ما سيستوس إن الإسلام may peace of Allah be upon on every one of you in today's Friday, we would like to remind you and preach on you on one of the very important topics in Islam. It is one of the rights of the human being that has been established by the Islam. It is one of the important relationship between human and human according to perspective of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is the relationship between a two person between two group of people between two group of families two group of nations and two group of states and even two individuals that are living together that is the neighborhood in islam even though it has been established in the holy quran but the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he registered his own life to be the role models to go to meet to be the 
most exemplary person that can respect the neighborhood. According to one of the statements of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he make the respecting the neighbor as one of the part of the iman, one of the part of the faith in Islam. He said, "Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir, fal yukrimu jara. Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir, fal yu'zi jara." It is said in the authentic hadith that has been narrated by the Sahaba that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam has stated. He said, you cannot be a good believer. You cannot be a recognized believer except you keep yourself from harming your neighbor. The person that are living with you Keep yourself away from anything that may embarrass him, from anything that may harm him, from anything that may disturb him. You can disturb your neighbor with your word. You must select the beautiful one and give it to him. You must select, you, must, you may harm your neighbor with the level of your voice. So talk in a neighborhood with a level of your voice that can be acceptable. You can harm your neighbor by doing any other thing in the community that may be the cause for their embarrassment. So keep yourself away from anything that may be the cause for that. Therefore, my dear brothers, my sisters in Islam, Allah say in the Holy Quran, وَعَبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْجَارِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِ الْجُنُبِ وَالصَّاحِبِ بِالْجَنْبِ وَبِنِ السَّبِيلِ وَمَا مَلَكَةِ أَيْمَانُكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُهِبُ مَنْ كَانَ مُخْتَالًا فَخُورًا Allah he said, worship Allah alone. Do not associate anything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, you should be very kind to uh, your two parents. You should be very kind to your parents. And you should be kind also with your relative in the family. Uncle, nephew, um, auntie, any person that is related to you, you should be kind to them. Do to them what they are in need of it, what they will appreciate it, and keep yourself away from anything that may be the cause for their anger. And also, you should always do everything to please them. You should keep yourself always from anything that may make them be thinking negatively about you. And waliyatama, the orphan children. It is obligatory of the Muslim to take care of good with the orphan children. Well, masakin, and they need it. Any person that is needed in the community, be a poor or student, sick person or stranger, is good for you not to do anything that may harm them. Well, jar is kurba, and Allah say in the sin ayah, He say you the Muslims. A better you the Muslim to take care good with your neighbor. The neighbor that is closer to you, be careful to it to him. The neighbor that is living with you in the same community, it is required from you the Muslims not to be bad to any of them. In this line, the neighbor that is living with you originally has this right. The neighbor that emergently came into the community as your stranger, Islam say, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yukri mudayfa. Islam say, who be believing in Allah 
whosoever believes in Allah, he believes in the day of judgment, you should respect your, your, your stranger. You should respect your stranger. Any stranger come to you in your community, whether he, came, he, he comes to you to, for temporary stay or he comes to you for permanent stay, you have to give them the full respect. This is the principle of Islam. According to some of the hadith, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say in the other hadith, Ma zala Jibreel yusini bijjar hatta zanantu annahu sayyuarisa. He said, Jibreel is the angel of Allah. Jibreel is the angels of Allah who your people call Gabriel. And Jibreel continued to advise me about the neighbor until later on I came to understand maybe the neighbor can inherit his friend. That means anybody who is living with you in the neighborhood, Jibreel came to advise the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for them to become very good to them and be kind to them. Therefore, my dear brothers, my sisters in Islam, if you are living in the any community, you should be constructive element in that community, not destructive one. You should be a useful person, not a harmful person. You can do that by controlling your voice while you are talking, for controlling your movement while you are moving. Do not be in the community that can embarrass the other people, even with your own religion, even with your own culture, even with your own anything. This is why the Islam have established to us what is called religious tolerance. Religious tolerance means that we should apply, we should implement our religion without giving any harm to anybody. So, my dear brothers, my sisters in Islam, we want to say to you this afternoon that we, the Muslims in Liberia, we are not different with the other Muslims around the world. <clears throat> we are not different with the Muslims and the other Muslims around the world. This is why when, when the Panion came to Liberia 1820, 1821. According to the historian, the Elizabeth boat in which they came on board, they were 83 persons. They came that day from the United States of America. Of course, they were strangers that day. They were new arrival people that day. And the religion that was in the country at that time was two types of the religion. Was a traditionalist and the religion of the Islam. Religion of Islam were covering all the western region and not in the region of the Republic of Liberia. And they were known, they were established. And the historian and the writers, the author <laughs> of the books, have uh, confirmed that they was existing in a power from all angles, economical power, military power, and social power. But despite of that, they welcomed the other people that came from the from, came from America and they, they, stand, they stood side by then against any other injustice treatment. Some people wanted to treat them unjustly, but the Muslim people stood side by then and protect them from that. That is, was because we the Muslims, we believe that the neighbor had to be respected, the neighbor had to be protected. Even the stranger too had to be welcomed. That was the issue that day we did. 
that day the Muslims did not say that even though those strangers they came with the Christianity we have to impose our Islam on them until they be established they were granted a freedom to establish their churches according to the historian the first church that we established that day was on the 1821 and the Islam were here 300 years before this part of that this part of that social power that the Muslim have that day this part of that military power that the Muslim have that day they grant their stranger the freedom to establish their religion that it come from the principle that the Quran has established Islam say La ikra hafidim. There is no compulsion in the Islam. We can make anybody compulsorily Muslim. And you have to convince someone before he become Muslim can be convinced with the evidence, with the dalil, with the knowledge. We believe in that our preaching, our teaching have to be the ways the means that can make or be able to convince somebody to become Muslim. That was the statement, that was the position of the Muslim towards the new arrival people that day. And from that day, the new constitution was established. Before that, the people surprised that the first constitution was prepared in America in the 1820 before the people come here and also 1839 another constitution was established Commonwealth Constitution and 1848 constitution that matched with the declaration of the independent independent was established also all of that are in the history of Liberia. From that time up to now, Muslims and Christians, they are living side by side in peace and tolerance. We see it unnecessary that someone should bring a new and strange idea to change Liberia to be whatsoever they are saying someone is saying christian state someone is saying christian nation someone is saying christian government or christian law who want to say to ourselves we the muslims we are prepared to treat our neighbor nicely and to talk to them politely and treat them the manner that the Islam have encouraged us to do but at the same time we want to say that from the Independence Day up to now why we can remain how we was and we should be careful with the people that can bring those kind of idea between us they just want to make our sweet relationship to be a sour so we the muslims we can say to the stakeholders this issue does not need to go to do any referendum in fact it is not supposed to be something that can be considered okay now, so before before you go to the referendum, I think it's understand that our viewers understand know why it is you're talking about the Christian state issue and what's the status of it right now. There was a proposal now to review the constitution of Liberia, that's nothing it says constitution, and that there's a proposition that is proposition twenty four, which was proposed by a group called the Self Consortium to return Liberia to a Christian state. They are saying that they want Liberia to become a Christian state. 
and the proposition 24 was taken to Banga to the Banga Convention in Bond County. It was voted upon by some of the by, by the delegates, and then it was it was brought to like to Monrovia, the capital city of Liberia, sent to the office of the president. The president reviewed them, and as a president, she does not have the right uh, to object to it. It is the legislature that do the objection. All she has to do is to express her opinion. In her opinion to the legislature, she said it was wrong, totally unacceptable, to turn Liberia to what they call a Christian state. In her mind, it is believed and important that Liberians live together as they've been living, and religious coexistence is going to be so, so important for Liberia. Right now, the propositions, the 25 propositions, including 24, which is the Christian state, is before the legislature, that is the parliament of Liberia. Yesterday, Tuesday, yesterday, uh, Thursday, February 25th, 2016, was the last popular hearing in which the acting chairman of the National Muslim Council appeared before the Horses Committee on Good Governance and Governance Commission and informed the Liberian people that it was wrong to turn Liberia to a Christian state, that it's important that we remain where we are right now. So that it is, the legislature will be voting upon it soon. If they vote upon it, it's going to go for referendum. If it is rejected by the legislature, it's going to stay as it is, and then we're going to live together. Check, that's it now. It's before your, your representative. You have your representative in your district where you live right now. It has been represented by Representative Kebra Yinka, <coughs> who called himself a reverend. He said to me previously in an interview that he supported Christians, that he's been campaigning against it. And you live in his district, but have you voted for him? If not, is it important that you talk to your lawmakers that, as a cleric, as a mufti of Liberia, that it's not good for Liberia, like you say? Bismillah rahman rahim I'm a mufti for Muslims. I don't want to personalize the issue by going to one lawmaker that have been voted by us in our uh, district here, if he want to support this issue. Really, this issue has been uh, brought out the first day by the uh, former warlord uh, Charles Gange Taylor, former president, uh, former president of Liberia, he is the one that brought this idea. He trained group of people with it, and that was including in his vision 2024. And the Muslims are looking at this issue that they should not be provocated. The issue of the Christian in Liberia cannot be the differences between the books, people of the books that were living with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Medina. We can be free to live with any non-Muslims Christian or Jews or anyone. Let me give you an example. In the Medina al Munawara, a young boy used to be working as a servant for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the man was not a Muslim. The boy was a Jew. Until one day the boy didn't work, would go to the work. Then the prophet asked about him, what wrong with my boy? I can't see him today. He was informed that the boy is sick. Then the prophet Muhammad walked to the boy family and meet a boy, boy father, boy mother, boy's mother, entire family, uh, so so Jews. They have a different religion besides Islam. And they state that was in Medina that day, it was an Islamic state. And the leader, political, military, religious, opinion leader, was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet have admitted that and accepted. 
it went to the boy speak to him and also pray for him and sympathize him because of the sickness because of this good relationship prophet Muhammad noticed on the boy that the boy is about to die the sickness reached to the level that prophet Muhammad noticed that the boy will not make it then he told him my son at the end of your life say la ilaha illallah then the boy look at his father then the father said to him Ati'a bel qasim Ati'a bel qasim obey the father of al qasim that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam therefore we the muslims we are following the full step of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was not disturbed to live with any other person that are making different religion. So, in the past, the former president of Liberia, on 2003, he went to the football field that he gave the state of Liberia to what you call that day. He will carry out. United Nation and the world stakeholders they sent him where they see a necessary for him but he was jailed he was sent to the tribunal but his own opinion was not in jail we have some of the lieutenants some of the messengers they are working towards those ideas. Therefore, we want to say that from the day the war over in Liberia and peace be revealed in, uh, here and from the day we have a uh, elected president Madam Ellen Johnson Salif in the mansion we the Muslims, we are living with no Muslims in peace. And also peaceful coexistence is growing dramatically. And also the development, the path of the development is open. But the young people are understanding this opinion with different things. I want to say to the stakeholders that the presenters of these ideas, idea, are people who are too related to the former president Charles Gange Taylor. The understanding of for the Muslim youth became different. Because they have, they have uh, understood that they are in risk, risk is a situation, and they consider this position to be a threat for their future security. Therefore, my advice to those who are concerned about the Islam who are concerned about the peace, who are concerned about Liberian, that let everybody so make sure that let all, let all of us Liberian remain how we used to be before. We can say that let's remain secular. We can say what some of the Muslims are planning if the Christians say that the Liberia should be the Christian state that they will also make a bail to declare the six countries that are dominated by Muslims to become another Islamic state so Liberia will be 
after that in the future two states in the one country to avoid all of that let's remain where we are and we should not look at this issue that is a today and tomorrow issue we must take example from the other countries that play with a petty point and result to the mass disaster at the end alhamdulillah we thank god we the muslims we are living together with the christian and the religious uh, inter-religious council is working perfectly and the bishop and the imams the muslim council and the council of churches they are working together for the favor of the peace in this country we should not change this sweet situation to other one that is better be right. better no. sure. what the proponents of this proposition are saying all they want to do declare that we are a christian state according to them you have your right to worship you have your right your children will have their right to work in government all they want according to them is to have an identity according to that but that's not identity don't you agree with them i don't want to talk much about this issue Brother Kane, please agree with me that in the Christianity we have a different, different doctrine. If the Christian state be established, Bible will be the source of the legislature. In that Bible, the woman situation in the Bible is stated. You know the leadership of the woman according to the Bible that something is there. According to the Bible, fornication, the married man made fornication, had to be stoned and killed publicly. According to the Bible, many things are there. And beside that, we have a Catholic doctrine we have a Lutheran doctrine. We have a result. We have a different, different understanding. This is why in the first constitution of Liberia, it was a stated inside this constitution that no religious set should take itself to be more superior in the order. Because in every church, they have their own law. If that law business came up on the board first, most the Christian uh, doctrine will disagree with their friends, and at the same time, we the Muslims, we see it. What is the necessity? What is the what is the necessity for it to be declared as a Christian state? So long, you are free now. And you're going to be free after the state. And you carry your identity now. And the same identity will be pro protected in the future. So long the situation is the same, let will remain this. This is why we can say the thing that under it is stay yet hardened. We don't know yet to avoid a future problem to avoid a two state in Liberia in the future let's keep this thing away Cape Mount dominated by 90 percent Muslims Lofa 65 percent Muslims Bopolu 85 percent Muslim Bomi 85 percent Muslims Majibi 55 percent Muslims this country they are ready sooner the christian state be declared they want to make another state to be declared again so long a need to be having some kind of normal of the signature be submitted so the bay can be endorsed and to avoid those misunderstandings we should go 
on the path of development, progress. Let's establish more schools. Let's teach our children. Let's make Liberia be in the caravan of the development. Let's look at, the, uh, at our neighbors. Let's look at the other countries that are going in the, uh, in, 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 in the progress, in the development. We should not be making ourselves be basic on the issue that uh, uh, Abu Bakr personally uh, consider it to be unnecessary issue. Now, okay, talk about it being unnecessary is with the legislature, and uh, all we do we just talk about it. The final decision will be the legislators. It is important that the council or the mufti speak with your lawmakers, speak to the legislature, informing them why it is it's important, why you think it's important that they do not vote for this aspect of the constitutional amendment that's going to be taking place. Not a single representative can talk to the entire legislature, you write the legislature, informing them of what your opinion as the highest spiritual religious person like you are for Islam. Yes, we, we have sent our representative to the Senate, uh, Senate yesterday, and the chairman of the Muslim Council and the Secretary General and other members they went there and they make clear our position. Our position is clear, but if they cannot understand until our own statement, we can do that. But however, we want to advise Liberian, let people more fear about Liberia. Liberia is in our heart, and we want Liberia to be enjoyable place. We don't want Liberia to be in unnecessary um, insecurity situation. Then Liberia should be secure. I was happy, as I said it in the first statement, I was very much happy by the statement of Madam Ellen Johnson Salif, the president, during the annual speech. She said, Liberia is protected and Liberia is safe. Therefore, let everybody should work, should do everything possible so Liberia should be protected. Our lawmakers, we are calling all of you, all of you collectively, not the only one that are living in my district. I'm calling on all of you to not endorse this issue. If you endorse it, you should wait for the Muslim own too. Then, when any day it reaches to you, you should endorse it. Then the country will be in the contradictory states of the state citizen of same uh, country. Here we can stop here today, inshallah. Oh, uh, I pray that Allah will protect Liberia. I uh, pray that Allah will protect Liberian. Allah will make Liberia in the good uh, path of development. Thank you very much, Sheikh Abu Bakr Sumer. Just view Sheikh Abu Bakr Sumer talking about neighborhood and talking about the proposition to make Liberia a Christian state. His position and the position of the National Muslim Council of Liberia is clear. In their mind, that it's not right for Liberia. It's important that Liberia remain as it is. I can say many thanks to all of you for viewing us on Real TV Channel 3. Join us next Friday, same time, same station for another edition of the program Focusing Islam. My name is Musa Kenny and Salman Where is a camera. I want to say Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for joining us in the program. Focus on Islam. Focus on Islam. Focus on Islam. It's Focus on Islam, an hour program that brings you face to face with Musa Kenin and his studio guests. Focus on Islam is a program designed to discuss the Islamic faith in totality, from prayers, way of life, Hajj, Ramadan, and many more. Focus on Islam comes this and every Friday only on Real TV. Focus on Islam. Focus on Islam. Focus on Islam. It's Focus on Islam, an hour program that brings you face to face with Musa Kenin and his studio guests. Focus on Islam is a program designed to discuss the Islamic faith in totality, from prayers, way of life, Hajj, Ramadan, and many more. Focus on Islam comes this and every Friday only on Real TV.